Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I use Sharpen AI by Topaz Labs. Now, if you have an average image and you focused fine, you don't have a stabilization issue, and the subject wasn't really moving, it's my opinion that the sharpening amount slider in Lightroom or any sharpening slider like an On One or Luminar or any of those apps, those sliders will do a fine job and you really don't need Sharpen AI to help you. Where Sharpen AI really shines though is when you have an image with an issue. You have a stabilization issue, you use too slow of a shutter speed, or there's subject movement, or you just missed focus. That's where Sharpen AI really shines. Now I have this image here, it was taken at the Erie Zoo of Ali. Uh, Ollie's no longer at the Erie Zoo in Erie, PA. He is now in the San Francisco Zoo. So don't go to Erie to visit Ollie. He's not there anymore. Anyway, the enclosure for the orangutans at the Erie Zoo has a huge skylight in it. And I'm going to give you a before a look at this shot. And you can see it's really bright. Uh, the sun was shining. It was beaming through that skylight. And it was draping across the glass I was shooting through. And it was very difficult to get a properly exposed image and it was difficult to focus. Um, I was able to process it to this point in Lightroom and if I zoom in, if I zoom in, you'll see that it's really not sharp at all. Um, it's really not sharp anywhere. I don't think I really miss focus. I just think the conditions were such that I really couldn't get a sharp image and this is where Sharpen AI will really help. Now what I did do in Lightroom is I just did really basic adjustments and some color adjustments. I didn't add any texture, any clarity, and I didn't add any detail sharpening at all. So what I'm going to do now is at this point, send it to Sharpen AI. I'm gonna right click on it, go down to Edit In, and then go over to Topaz Sharpen AI. Now it is a raw file, so my own only choice is to edit, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. I'm gonna use these settings and I'm gonna click edit. Now on the top left-hand corner, you'll see a progress bar. Lightroom is creating the TIFF file with those specifications and it will open it up into Sharpen AI. Now I have Sharpen AI set up so that I'm seeing the view of four. That's because Sharpen AI has three different AI modes. They have a sharpen mode, a stabilize mode, and a focus mode. And if you have a uh, Sharpen AI set up with this view, you'll see all three of those modes along with the image with no sharpening done on it at all. This allows me to compare them to one another and decide which one I think is best. So typically what I'll do is set it up like this. I'll let it do its rendering. And in the top left corner, I have the original image with no sharpening at all. Then the sharpen AI mode is the one to the top right. The stabilize mode is the one to the bottom left and the focus mode is to the bottom right. And I'll just click through and look at the settings. Now I have sharpen set up for auto. So um, Topaz Lab Sharpen AI is just gonna examine the image and give what it thinks the setting should be. Stabilize mode I have set up to auto as well and focus I happen to have set up as auto as well. Now, as I look at them, all of them were set to auto. It appears to me that the stabilize mode is the best. So typically what I'll do is I'll have them all set to auto, decide which one did the best job on auto, use that mode from this point forward. And what I'll do now is I'll, I'll adjust the sliders to try to tweak out a little more sharpening, suppress a little more noise or something like that. Now in this case, um, it's sharp, but I think we could get a little more sharpening out of it. So I'm going to move sharpness slider up pretty high, like to 80. Now it has to re-render when you do that. So I'll let it re-render, see what it looks like. And once it does, it's pretty sharp. Uh, there is maybe a tiny bit of noise being introduced over in here. So I'm going to boost noise suppression up a little bit more, maybe to 30. Unfortunately, every time you move a slider or you change your view, or you zoom in or out, it has to re-render. So it is a little bit time consuming, but it's usually worth it. Now, as I look at it now and I compare it to the original image, it's much, much sharper and it looks much better. I mean, I could see a lot of detail in Ollie's um, eyelids and below his eyes that were all blurry here. A lot more detail on his skin, 
a lot more detail uh, even on uh, the leafy green he is eating. So I'm going to go with stabilize mode. Just make sure that is the active mode that you have clicked over here on the right. You'll see there'll be a little block box, blue box around it. That's the active mode. And I'll click apply. So we're going to use that. Now it's going to actually uh, add that sharpening to the entire image. And then it will open back up into Lightroom. Now I'll pause the video so you don't have to watch this. And when we, ret when we return, we'll be in Lightroom and we'll compare the two images and I'll show you what I do next. Okay, we're back in Lightroom. This is the sharpened image. Now I'm going to hit the F6 key on my keyboard, so I'll bring up the uh, film strip at the bottom. And what we'll do is we'll zoom in. I'm going to hold the Command key on my Mac. It's Control key on a PC. Then I could draw like a box over, over Ollie's face like that. So this is the sharpened image. Now I'll click on the other image. This is the unsharpened image. So you could see that there's quite a difference uh, between the two. They're sharpened unsharpened. Now if you ever have an image come back from a plugin and in the film strip you see these little up arrow there with those three lines, just click on that and this box will pop up and what you want to do is import settings from disk. Click on that and then it will get rid of that and it will have the proper metadata settings. So again there is the sharpened image and there's the unsharpened image. Now I'll zoom back out. Now I'm, I'm pretty much done. And one thing I should add, now at this point, um, if I needed to crop, I would crop. This was an uncropped image. I didn't mention that at the beginning. We're back on the raw file, the unsharpened image I'll just show you. So that isn't cropped. If I was going to crop now, I would crop at this point, but I don't need to crop this. I captured it finding camera. So what I would do here now is I just, you know, add a little texture, add maybe a little clarity. I could go down and even add some more sharpening here. Now it's getting a little too sharp, right? So I got to be careful. So what I'm going to do is I'll add this sharpening, but I'm going to go back up to the basic and we'll undo texture. I think that was overdoing it. And then I'll finish it off with a vignette. So I've been having a lot of fun the last uh, few weeks. I've been going through older images that I rejected and I've been sending them into Sharpen AI to kind of resurrect them. And there's other images too that I um, you know, shot at super high ISOs and I really didn't think I could salvage the image because there was just too much noise. I've been using Denoise AI on those images. And then others where I just couldn't get close enough, uh, most often the wildlife shots, I just couldn't get close enough to the wildlife. And um, I, you would have to do a significant crop. So I've been using Gigapixel AI on those images. So I've been really salvaging a lot of older images. So been keeping me keeping me busy during the pandemic so that sharpen ai that's how i use it um you know any comments below let me know how you use it how you might differ from me and uh maybe i could learn something as well thank you everyone that watches my videos i really do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon <laughs>